Welcome to Key Factors Podcast, where knowledge meets ambition in the fast-paced world of real estate and mortgage. I'm your host, Mark Jones, bringing you the latest insight, trends, and expert advice to navigate this dynamic property market. In each episode, we dive deep into the heart of the industry, dissecting market movement, exploring investment strategies, and unlocking the secret to real estate success. Whether you're a seasoned professional, an aspiring investor, or simply looking to stay ahead of the curve, this is the ultimate guide to making informed decisions in the world of property and real estate. So grab a seat and let's uncover the key factors that make all the difference. Welcome to Key Factors Podcast. Let the journey begin. Welcome back to another episode of Key Factors Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Jones, and we are powered by ReviewMyMortgage.com, the largest index of mortgage programs in the nation. Um, And today in this discussion, I wanted to chat about something that I feel is, um, I don't know, spreading, uh, maybe even faster than the COVID coronavirus recently. Um, But with that being said, I'd like to start with this video. It can feel good lounging around and doing nothing, sometimes too good. Whether it's to avoid work or escape physical activity, we've all had those days. But why are some people way lazier than others? Is there a couch potato gene that causes lazy behavior? Evolution has molded our brains and bodies to respond positively to natural rewards such as food, sex, and even exercise. Wait, exercise? Yep, the pleasure we experience comes largely from the dopamine system in our brain, which conveys these messages throughout the body, ultimately helping to ensure the survival of our species. For many, the pleasure derived from exercise can become just as addictive as food and sex. But while we're all up for more food and sex, many struggle with the desire for physical activity, even though it's an essential part of human biology. Scientists studying mice have found an interesting genetic connection. After separating mice into two groups, those that chose to run on their wheel more often and those that decided not to run as much, the difference was clear in their offspring. After 10 generations, the running mice would run on their wheels 75% more often than the other group, and by 16 generations, they were running 7 miles a day as opposed to the average 4 miles. It seemed their motivation for physical activity was genetic. We all inherit genes from our parents that play a key role in the development of our brains, and these genes can make some literally crave activity. In fact, the brains of the running mice had larger dopamine systems and regions that deal with motivation and reward. They needed activity, otherwise their brains would react similar to a drug-addicted rodent when deprived of cocaine or nicotine. They were genetically addicted to running. We also inherit genes responsible for our other traits, from impulsivity to procrastination to work ethic and straight-up laziness. And it turns out our physical laziness may be linked to a couch potato gene, or rather, a mutation in a normal gene which regulates activity levels. This gene is responsible for a type of dopamine receptor. Without it, you're more likely to prefer sitting around and simply doing less than those who have the properly functioning gene. So the truth is, your desire for activity may not be entirely up to you. But many environmental factors are also at play, which means you aren't doomed to a life of laziness. Although making a change will be harder for some, knowledge is power. So if you think you're genetically lazy, get off the couch and fight your DNA. Your brain will reward you in the end. Need some help to get there? So today we're going to be talking about the epidemic of laziness that's spreading. And I brought along a very close friend um, that, in my opinion, is one of the hardest working realtors out there, um, besides you, of course, Kristen Jones. Uh, and <laughs> and for that reason, we're having some uh, some margaritas to kind of uh, celebrate our hard work. So without further ado, Kendra, how are you? Hey, thanks for having me back. Absolutely. It's good to have you back in the new studio. What do you think? I like it. I Not like bad, it. huh? Yes. So we're talking about lazy people in essence. And um, I think that it is something that like this video was saying is not genetic in my opinion. I think the video in itself is kind of a contradiction of a lot of things. Maybe some of it could be genetic, uh, but for the most part, I think it comes from your why, why are you doing things? Um, But I think that this video almost illustrates why there are so many excuses because there's so many excuses being given to those that are lazy, but who knows? So let's, let's dive into this conversation. What are your thoughts, uh, essentially on laziness as a whole? What do you experience? You know what? Let's back up Kendra, since we've got the new studio, tell the folks who you are, uh, how you got in the business, what you specialize in all that good stuff. 
All right. So I've been in the business for, uh, I think, around 24 years. Um, I started when um, I was 24. Um, I was the youngest one in the office. Uh, the average age at that time was probably 65. Uh, majority of our uh, agents in that office were um, retired teachers or um, kind of just bored trying to do something different. But uh, average age, you know, like in, the, in their 60s for sure. Um, so it was definitely a, um, and honestly today, looking at stats, that is kind of the norm too, is that the, the medium age of agents are, you know, 50s to 60s Still. as well. Yeah, the wow. um, majority are, are uh, definitely not under four, under 40 yeah. at this point. Um, but So yeah, keep going. Um, so I started and, you know, at that, that time we didn't have a uh, you know, the computer software, we didn't even have, you know, smartphones, we were flipping through Rolodex. Yeah, phone smart users. Yeah, yeah, we had the Maps Co., you know, like going out, you know, like map pirates and trying to figure out where we're going. So it was a whole different market than it was today. And so you you really had to really had to work mm -hmm. to to make it make a living at it. And Because right now we have it so easy with all the resources that we have um, to make it easier to do our job, but and we'll we'll get into that piece of the we have so many tools. Um, but before we do, what what do you specialize in? You, you're in the Lake McQueenie area, uh, but what what is it that uh, I guess before we do that, you know what? Let's we'll talk about how you came into the industry and what kind of hard work you had to do um, when we bring that part in. But at this point. Where are you with your career? We know that you're a rock star realtor with Keller Williams and still kicking ass. Um, but what are you special in, specializing in these days? Um, well, actually, I specialize in a few different things. Um, waterfront is my main niche properties, um, vacation rentals. Um, I also, um, uh, three years ago, started a division at the coast um, with, I guess, you know, it's a different kind of waterfront versus the lake. Yeah. But those are my uh, main specialties and also with... Uh, uh, property management as well. Okay. For vacation okay. and long-term rentals. Got it. Okay. So now that you've been doing that quite some time, let's, let's dive into this uh, discussion. I'm, I'm eager. I'm excited to have it with somebody that can be honest and without fear, just tell it like it is, or at least from our perspective. Um, that being the case, what are your thoughts on this topic? People being lazy these days. I can't say everybody is, but I mean, what are your thoughts? Well, it's it's very frustrating because not only do I do um, real estate, but I also own a um, a coffee shop, and just the turnover that I've had since the six months we've been open, mm. just because of purely the fact that people really don't really want to work. They say they want to work, but they really don't. At the end of the day, they just open that they'll get paid to, to basically do nothing. Right, and it just it's very frustrating because you. Um, yeah, but I've, I've, always, I've had a job since I've been 12 years old <laughs> and I've literally had a job ever since I might have had one month when I moved from Minnesota to Texas that I did not have a job since then. And so it's just, it's just baffling to me that, you know, people say they can't find a job or not, but you know, I've, I was, had three jobs in high school mm -hmm. while I was playing sports and still managed to get, you know, almost straight A's and just, it just, it seems that this today and age is so much different. Yeah. Um, I mean, when I got into real estate, it was kind of crazy how it happened was I was um, applying to be a beverage cart girl at the Bandit Golf Course. Okay. That was 25 years ago. And I applied for that job, no lie, seven times. And wow. they and they just kept saying, no, we're full, we're full. And finally, the seventh time I went in there, he said, I don't have a spot for you, but I'm hiring you because I've never seen somebody so pers persistent on wanting something. How freaking cool, yeah. man. Yeah, no, I, I and, and I knew that, um, but it's, it's important for folks to know and understand where you're coming from when you say that you're seeing a lot of lazy around, um, whether it is from the lack of uh, desire to do that job or that specific job. Um, or a genetic trait, <laughs> like they say in that video, um, there's got to be some root causes to it, and we can only speculate. That being the case, what do you think that it's caused from? Because your experience, not only from the real estate side, but also now that you've got the coffee shop, 
And I'm sure you see it just like I do when you go to a restaurant or when you go to a just a, a drive through fast food, anything. It's like, are you guys serious right now? <laughs> uh, and then expect a tip. It, yeah. it's, it's ridiculous. So what are you seeing as far as, like you said, you have high turnover right now, and, and that's in a short period of time. What traits are you seeing that is uh, making you believe that they're lazy at the time? Like, what are they going through? What is... Well, just recently, um, I had put an, an ad on Indeed just because I needed more employees. Cause, um, and so I had got 55 people that applied. Okay. I um, decided to do just a simple question back to all of them without really even looking at there to see if they could just literally, com you know, complete that simple task. And all I really said is, why would you like to work at this coffee shop? Mm -hmm. And why are you leaving the uh, current job you're at? Right. I only got a response from 10 of them. Oh, wow. And then at that point, I asked another question. I said, okay, well, I'm going to send you an application so I can check references. And that at that point, then I can, I'll have you come in for an interview. Right. I've only had one person that's completed that application. And that's, it's just that they just feel like they apply. Well, I automatically got the job. Let me start. When do I go? And that's yeah. not, you know, not really going any further. So, and then, you know, or, or we'll cancel an interview and then, you know, two or three times and say, well, sorry, you know, this, you know. Like things, it's things, no big deal. Yeah, things happen or didn't show up. I'm like, no, that's not, that's not okay. Right. And so that's, I mean, it's just, that was not something that I grew up, I mean, being able to do. Same. You weren't late, you know, you weren't late and you showed up on time. You didn't call in and, you know, um, you know, just even right now in, at the schools. Right. There, and since COVID, the school is letting kids get away with like 20 absences yeah. and still still finish the the yeah, year as long as they make up an hour of time mm -hmm. and it's and i you know i was talking to one of the um higher up education people in the school and i said this is crazy and she said yep she said it's ever since covid they're just let it go i'm like it why you know like you're, we're not teaching our kids anything that they can be Tart of your absent and then, you know, oh, no big deal, moving on to the real world. So right. it's it's like I said, it's not just in it's in everything. Mm -hmm. Um and and I mean, some of it was already there before COVID, but it's really kind of escalated, I feel like. Yeah. Since then. I definitely uh, agree in regards to the COVID situation. It changed many's lifestyle quickly. And to a certain extent, you can almost say or ask the question, did it change their lifestyle or did it allow them the lifestyle that they always kind of strived for, which was to be uh, this uh, fly on the wall going through the motions? Because in my opinion, when you talk about the application process to get into the shop, they just went through the motions. It's like, okay, are you guys just applying uh, for for unemployment benefits? Yeah, you know, how that's, you have what, to that's what I wonder. It's like, yeah, you have to show that you're applying and that's what it is. And I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'd like to ask them that, but I'm not going to get an answer. No, obviously. you won't. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> so we don't really know what the reasoning is, you know, yeah. why they're not, not re applying or re replying. But yeah, it's, um, it's definitely something that I feel like in – it's just become harder and harder to address too, yeah. just for because people like are almost um, offended right. if you're you know calling them out on it and why and like well that's just well that's just the way it is now and what you know like they just assume like well that's the standard entitlement and, maybe it's a lot of entitlement for sure and but they the standard has been lowered so much sure and that they're okay. Yeah. They're okay being below average and just getting through and going through the motions now. Question, do you think that it stems from a place of uh, genetics? Does it stem from a place of their surroundings and the, um, I guess, promotion in being that way? Uh, does it come from the parents? Is it the teachers? Is it all of them? Uh, what What do you think that that could possibly be? Because I'm always one that says, okay, if we're going to bitch, we might as well bitch and give some type of solution or some type of uh, reason as to why and how we can solve it. Obviously, we're not going to solve it here today, right. but it will get those listening, watching to maybe think and incorporate something in their life. And if they don't notice it by now, maybe they'll start opening their eyes to seeing it. Um, so what are your thoughts? What do you think it stems from? 
I, I definitely don't agree with the genetics thing. I, I feel like everybody kind of, I mean, yes, there's, there may be, be see, uh, some aspects of that. Mm-hmm. Maybe if there's some mental, you know, depression or something like that, that yeah. might cause them to, um, you know, but I think that would have been the same regardless of where they were born or what time, you know, mm-hmm. time frame. Um, so that factor, yes, but overall, no, I think it's a lot of, it's, it comes down to, you know, who you surround yourself with. Yeah. You know, we always talk about, Hey, you are who you surround, you know, top five people you hang out with. And so right now I think people are just hanging out with the wrong people and not getting that encouragement to do better. And they're all okay with just, because they're like, well, I'm just, I'm, well, I might be a little bit better than my other friends. I'm like, well, yeah, well, but that's, that ain't safe. That's still not the extraordinary (laughs) that we're looking for. Right. And then you mentioned something that uh, got me thinking is, the idea of COVID taking place and you are who you surround yourself with, but if you're still kind of cooped up and not that people are cooped up, but if they're still running the same way they were during the pandemic, they're probably not surrounding themselves with many people to begin with right now. Well, and I think a lot of that comes down to too, is they're surrounding themselves with the same kind of people, but Mm. it was Oh, it was already starting there because it was so much of the video games yep. and so much of just you're like virtually maybe be seeing people, but you're not sure. really interacting with others in general. So you're already kind of we already were secluded and it just made it worse when COVID started. And then when, you know, it made it easy to do and, you know, online school, which they that was a joke. I mean, right. they were not learning what, the, you know, normal year um would be no you're it, right it was just like cut down and like and if you didn't turn your assignment no big deal like it was just like it was a joke literally and they joke. still passed them the teachers still got yeah. paid i mean right. you, you are correct that yeah. was something that in my opinion lasted way too long like many other things that lasted way too long during that period but we won't go down the political road today yeah um but, but yeah, they and then it just didn't really didn't ever got it never got better. It never got back to even where close to where it's at. There's so many kids nowadays that aren't even f- finishing at the school. They're finishing online be- after COVID. They're just decided, well, you know, I can still do this. You yeah, know, it's allowed. I still get my you know my diploma just the same it would be from you know the the high school. Right. So they, it has just made it made it easier to disconnect from everybody. How sad, how how truly sad that this is. Now I've got an article here that I want to bring up. Okay, Um, so this article here that I found, Gen Z workers are lazy. Uh, Some bosses say they don't don't do anything unless every second of their day is managed. Um, And I think that maybe ties into what you're talking about with the interview process of it. So some of the key points in this is some Gen Z employees aren't sure how to interact in person after starting their new career. Uh, Lazy young workers need a lot of handholding, managers told the Wall Street Journal. And there's not looking to be productive, uh, one manager told the journal. It says, in the wake of the global lockdown, young professionals are entering the workforce having taken at least a semester of their college education online. The lack of hands-on learning might have uh, left Gen Zers lazy or clueless when it comes to completing basic tasks on job, some managers told the Wall Street Journal in a report this week. There's not looking to be productive. Laura Davis, a director of John Ball Zoo, told, and this at a zoo? Come on! Uh, If they're not told what to do, if someone isn't managing every second and keeping them busy, they're inclined to not self-identify what they need to do. Um, And it's to do nothing. So some colleges and companies have opted to training new graduates who wanted to learn about uh, working in offices. As experts suggest, they lack soft skills, including lessons on how to compose an email, how to spark office chit chat, and even how to know what to wear to work. (laughs) You can kill that one. Um, So it seems to be a generational thing. And I'm terrified for the future generations because things typically continue to slide on the scale. Um, and it's not anything that was new. And I'm saying generationally because gen X 
called millennials lazy. Millennials are now calling Gen Zers lazy, and I'm sure prior to et cetera, et cetera. But the prior generations didn't have technology like you were talking about. They didn't have the ease of access to all of the things at their fingertips that allows them to feel busy, but in turn, not productive. Does that kind of make yeah, sense? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that being said, I want to tie back you getting into the industry because you were super young. What was that like? What did you go through? What were your expectations? What were some of the tasks that you did? Because as we know, when you got into the bandit, you were relentless in your pursuit and getting hired there. So you badgered them until they said, you know what? <laughs> I've never met anybody more persistent. God dang, we're okay. Come on. <laughs> I don't have a spot, but I'll make a spot. That being the case, when you jumped into the real estate business, I'm sure you didn't just jump in and start crushing it. What were, what was that like? What were those tasks? What were your expectations? Um, so I, I kind of had kept my expectation pretty low because it was how I got in there was I was um, actually looking for a home myself and um, the owner of the golf course, I asked him, I said, Hey, you know, I would, can you re recommend a, a realtor in the area to help us uh, purchase? And so he, he recommended his friend. And so I, we started working with, with her and then we ended up finding um finding our home well during that process um she apparently told um well actually the owner of the golf course told uh terry lens um, was her name and she he told her i think kendra would be really good at real estate and i was like okay that's kind of weird like as you like i thought i was a great employee at that <laughs> point i was running the running the whole beverage cart wasn't even on it anymore run opened up the restaurant and um beverage area in the back. And I was like, wow, that's like trying to push me out the door. I was like, and I had, at that point, I'd only been in Texas three years. Okay. And I'd only been in uh, uh, New Braunfels for maybe six months, you know, at okay. that point. Um, so I was like, well, I mean, I've always liked real estate. Um, I actually had purchased a condo when I was 19 in, okay. in Minnesota. And so I already had kind of dealt with the real estate um, market and so I was like, well, I'll check it out, you know. And I was going to school at ACC and still working at the Bandit. And I was in my last year. And I said, well, I'll, I'll give it a try. What's it going to hurt, right? Yeah. So I, well, at first I said, can I just follow you around for like a week and, or, you know, a few days and kind of see. So true what, story? Yeah. True okay. Story, yeah. So I just said, okay, let me follow you around. So I followed around. I was like, hmm, this is pretty cool, you know. If anything, I could do it on, you know, like everyone thinks in real estate, I can just do it on the side, you know, part time and go from there. So I got my license and just kind of put myself in it. I told myself, okay, I'm gonna give myself a year. And if I don't, you know, sell a million dollars worth of property in my first year, then I'm out. Okay. And um, so I went through and I sold a million over a million dollars. Now, question about that million dollars, the million dollars in production would easy numbers get you to the $30,000 a year mark. Was that kind of what you were making at the time at the bandit to be able to go, okay, I'm willing to take this risk to swap out. Yeah. I was actually probably making a little bit more than that, okay. but I was just, you know, kind of setting the bars, you know, I, I felt like it was, it was high because most agents don't do that. Sure. If, you know, their first year at that, at least in that in 2000. Probably still to this yeah, day, 2000. if you're not in 2020, 2021. Right, right, yeah. And that was in 2001 when I got my license. And so I had just set myself goals of doubling my production every year or getting out of the business and I would go back and finish my degree. Yeah. So I just, I mean, it was, it was, it was hard because I literally moved into a real estate company with, and I don't know at that time because I didn't know any different if there was different companies that offered different things. But I was literally said, "Here's your phone, right. like a you know actual phone." Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Rotary. And here's a desk, and you know, basically figure it out. Like no training, no nothing. Only thing I learned was what I had taken my classes with, sure. and also what just following the other agents in the office. So, right. um, I probably learned a lot of the bad habits because they had been in the business so long and. Um, and you may not even know this, but there, you know, at, at that time, I don't think it's the case anymore, but agents could, didn't have to do continuing education after a certain point. Okay. okay. If they were in it or ever. grandfathered in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there was agents in our office that hadn't taken a new class in probably 15 years. So, <laughs> wow. like, you know, using post-it notes as their <laughs> yeah. little 
filing system yeah. and I mean just you know crazy so I I learned probably badly kind of like you know when you learn to drive yeah and you're already, you're learning you know uh, don't learn how to drive from your parents right at all. yeah yeah exactly <laughs> or, you know or I had been driving so long before I got my license <laughs> yeah and so I'd already picked up the bad habits <laughs> yes yeah, too late so that's it, right it's, you know that so I said completely different different uh time of thing and it was it was hard and I I literally was taking a huge risk on um, doing it, but I was up for the challenge. Um, I mean, I said, I didn't even know where I was going, you know, let alone I know how to get to work and back. But as far as if somebody said, okay, where's, you know, this street, I wouldn't have no idea. And so, yeah, the whole maps thing. And, you know, I just, I just, you know, f faked it till I made it. You make it. And, yeah. and that, that is repeated often on this uh, show uh, podcast. And another thing is also repeated on this podcast that you mentioned early in, in this which is you elected or asked to follow this person around. Were you going to get paid for it? Guarantee you weren't. So if you were to ask a Gen Z or I, I don't know, this generation, I'll just generalize. Are you willing to go ride around to follow somebody for a week, two weeks without getting paid in order to, would you be open to it? guarantee you they'd say what why would i need to do that like what what is what would i get out of that or whatever the case but you don't see that anymore no um and i know because i hire new employees they're not gen zers um but i've had some where it's like okay we're gonna do shadowing so you can understand our stuff and they don't take it seriously and the ones that do tend to do much better than the others because they it's almost as if they invest their time versus their what they believe their value is. I think that what it, what it's going towards these new to the business, uh, uh, new to the workforce have this sense of a false value. Yep. Many have never actually failed or had a hardship that, um, others have to put it into perspective for them. I don't know if they've been babied the entire time or whatever the case, but, uh, that is missing that piece of, sacrifice to gain and you said that in the in the beginning of that so um please continue in regards to what type of things were you doing uh in the beginning that one would either not do today or see as uh, a waste of time waste of effort uh there's no way i'm going to do that because i'm too lazy but they're not going to say that to you yeah so we had i i desk duty which is still you know still around where you're you get any of the calls that come in um from the, the signs or or walk-ins right so at that time you know everybody had um different schedules if they wanted to take it or not so a majority of the agents in the office did take their desk duty but they were would literally like you were you were man it was like mandatory that to keep dinner that you had to be there from like 10 to four or five or whatever sure. it was um, but then they would sometimes leave for lunch and, and it got a little bit lax that the, you know, the broker wasn't like making everyone stick to it and may not even show up that day or not. But I made it a point that I was in the office at all times. So if they left or if I got there before they did, I'd be there an hour before they would start mm -hmm. and I would stay an hour later or two hours. So I was just being there. Yeah. So that, you know, that was also goes back to just when I was growing up wait, waiting tables. Yeah. I was the non-smoker that was the waitress mm -hmm. and when you didn't have sections and you was a, it was a free-for-all like first person that got to the table got the table <laughs> and they would always wonder how come i made so much more money than they did i'm like because i'm not walking out and taking a smoke break every hour or i'm not you know dilly-dallying around i'm i'm working yeah and so it makes a difference when you get what you put in but yeah it had nothing to do with just me and them it was because i was putting the work where they were just getting by right uh, uh you get back what you put in that resonates with me heavy um that's one of the reasons why i switched from what i was doing in the banking world over to a commission type based uh career and it was because at the time I was going above and beyond every time. Why? Not to get noticed. It's just what I do. Uh, it's innate. It was taught from the time I was a little kid growing up. And I got tired of doing that and not seeing the benefit from it. So I switched over to something that you actually do get rewarded for the hard work that you put into it. And I think that maybe that is missed these days. 
um, as we roll this discussion into uh, the career path that we're both in and what we're seeing right now in regards to the the lack of, I don't know, uh, is it laziness? Is it... Um, I, I don't know. What What are your thoughts? What is the... It, it, I can't say it's lack of knowledge because knowledge is at your fingertips. Jump on your phone, jump on YouTube, what have you. You can find anything that you want to find. Um, but I think it stems from a lack of why, a lack of purpose, a lack of, um, and, and I've heard, maybe we can look it up here in a moment, but the Gen Zers essentially don't want to do something that they're not emotionally attached to or it's not helping the world or something something along those lines and to me any which way you look at that concept in order for you to help the world it starts with one you've got to contribute and your contribution can then multiply through the lives of others but if you are doing this and not actually moving and and trying different things and failing and working hard um how much really are you contributing to society? And I think the answer is very little, uh, especially in our industry these days. So we can shift this conversation into um, the NAR settlement that came out and the amount of fear that we're seeing, especially on social media. That's all I see on my feed for the last month now. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm in a couple of uh, meme and joke groups that used to be meme and joke groups. Now <laughs> it's all doom and gloom. It's like, Hey, uh, what do you guys think about this? And do you really use a buyer's representation agreement? And how does that work out for you? It, I'm like, where happened to all the jokes? Yeah. Well, you guys was a good one that I think you might've posted the other day about that NARS, you know, is uh, requiring that agents update their, their profile pictures or their billboards or whatever it is, cards every five years. Yeah. So that's, that was pretty funny. Yeah. yeah they it, get true. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I'm, you know, guilty of that having a mouth. Well, same yeah. here, yeah. but yeah. I still look the same. I mean, <laughs> well, on. yeah. You, we age like fine wine. <laughs> <laughs> so that being the case, I mean, what, what is, what do you think that it stems from? Because in our industry, we're seeing people that are not going above and beyond, even for the 3% that's out there. Right. And I think first we have to de de uh, define what just doing your job is as a realtor. Would you like to do that? Yeah. So, you know, one one thing, you know, with the new settlement, I, I was actually, every, there is a lot of people that are scared, but the agents that are going to make it aren't because we know our value as agents and we can show that, but we have to show, we're, we're going to have to show that where versus where, where we just kind of did our job. Right. And now we just have to make sure that they, they know what our worth is. Mm -hmm. And so that makes it different. And the ones that are scared is because they don't, they don't feel like they have the worth and that they're, we're going to have to work double hard to, to fake that they have the 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 worth to um for someone to pay them you know to to do that versus just an automatic deal what a crazy concept that you just brought up because the idea of and and i got into the business the same way you did you you almost have to fake it till you make it and we're not talking lie to people but go through the motions of doing the extra work to be able to answer the questions to be able to um make up for your lack thereof in many aspects of it but those that, let's say, got in the business in 2020, 2021, who, in their opinion, after three months in the business, they made it. So they like skipped the fake it part. Mm -hmm. They made it. And now things are changing and they're having to go and fake what they made. Right. So you fake it till you make it, but you made it and now you got to fake it. <laughs> so that should be on a t shirt. Yes. Yes. <laughs> agree. Agree. Um, that being the case, I mean, are you seeing that? What kind of things are you seeing uh, in the real estate industry from a lazy standpoint? And I don't think you tell me if it's an age group that is this way or it's just the the group as a whole. I mean, I don't know. Um, I think it's kind of still pretty new right now as far as what the settlement, if you know, if it goes into if it actually takes effect or not. But um how about aside, aside from the yeah, settlement? Settlement, just, just the in general, yeah. And just in general, you know, since the market has shifted, um, you know, since the, the boom 
it's, you know, it's people, there's a lot of people getting out. There's been a huge amount of people getting out. You know, real estate was already a super high, you know, turnover rate. Um, you know, they, you know, I remember the stats for the longest time were, you know, 80% of the agents are going to be gone within within two years. Right. It is now at 87%. Wow. 75% in the first year. Yeah. They're, wow. Are, are, are gone. So, and there's a lot now that are, you know, become January 1 before the settlement even came out that left the business because of all of their dues that were coming, they're mm-hmm. coming up and they just weren't, weren't selling anything. Right. Um, you know, the majority of agents yeah, make less than you can make at, you know, working McDonald's. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so that's, that part of that you know, made a, the shift already. Yeah, the agents sure. coming out, but it's because they're just didn't wanting to put it. They may have had a little bit of a a burst, you know, and then they're like, oh, maybe I can hang on to this. And then the real world hit them, and they're like, oh, they don't want to put they don't want to put the time in. They don't want to put right. the effort into it, and you know, are 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 getting out, you know, within the first you know two years. And it's 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 a lot of it's though the same thing that it always has been, is that people think that our business is easy. Yeah. That it's that, you know, they see, because oh, they only see what what you're doing, like as far as if, if you're busy and you're a good agent, they just see like, oh, wow, you're you're doing awesome. And it was all just through in your lap. And it's it's not because who you know, right? it's who you get to know. Yeah. You know, so I, you know, when I started, I literally didn't know anybody. Mm-hmm. Like I knew like, people I worked with. So I wasn't, I, I had no sphere of influence to right. call. Like I could call everyone back home, but you know, back then, real, you know, really no one even told you, Hey, you can get a referral fee from, you know, in Minnesota, Wisconsin or whatever else at that point. And so it was, you know, it was just, just completely different, but it's a lot of just the agents aren't putting in the time and not doing what they need to do to, to, to make it. Yeah. You know? and, and it, it comes down to what they said about, you know, if it's not, if it's not written down in the checklist of go to do it, well, it kind of is if mm-hmm. you look for it, if you want it. There you go. You know, they're like, okay, well, here's this is how, what you need to do to make it, but you're not getting paid to go through that checklist there and do go. the work. So it's there. That's part of what you said is that the, people aren't getting anything out of it because they're not wanting to get anything out of it. Right. And if they're paid to do it, probably less that yeah. they would get out of it. So the ones that are going to make it are the ones that are doing internships for free or doing things or following around and wanting to know the all knowledge versus making, make, you know, having to be made right. to do it. No, you're, you're, I think you're on the money uh, with that. And it, it um, it's like when we talk about right now, and, and you know what? I'll go back to maybe a year ago when rates started trickling up and then all of a sudden, boom, they went up and volume like stopped real quickly. Then it started to slowly pick back up. Uh, now we're nowhere near what it was, but myself and many other top producers, uh, both mortgage and real estate side, were singing the same song. It's back to basics, guys. It's back to basics. And I don't think that the... Uh, new age of realtors, new age of loan officers even got an opportunity to understand or figure out or to stab establish what the basics were for themselves. Right. They jumped in, they put a social media post out, said I was a realtor rates were 3% or sub 3% and boom, they got a customer. And then all of a sudden uh, your lender approved them and they show them the house that's multiple offers. So they think it's the right time because everybody wants it bad. And now they're a homeowner. And you're on to the next one. So there was never any, uh, how do I utilize my sphere of influence to gain additional referrals? How do I even do an open house? There weren't open houses that were going on then. You would look at like you were silly if you asked a realtor, hey, can I join you in your next open house? They were like, what? Yeah. (laughs) No, I'm just going to list it. What are you talking about? It's going to sell. And it did. So the, the, the logic is... In your early uh, uh, pieces of your career, you had an opportunity to establish what the basics were. You knew you had to call X amount of people. You knew you had to shake them out of hands, kiss babies, all that jazz, track your referrals, etc. But I don't think that they understood that. And then when it was time to start doing it, they're behind already. 
they're quite a bit behind actually. Right. So, and also to just the the way that uh I mean our our society has gotten to and I'm totally guilty of this as well is that we are not phone people anymore. We are text and email and that's, that's how true. we're trying to communicate with everybody. But there is that generation that still appreciates that phone call, right. the talk, or, you know, uh, or even the agent. There's, you know, there's certain agents that I know, like, they'd rather just talk to me than, you know, text me. And um, so that that difference, too, has made a big thing is like, okay, well, I, you know, I, I reached out to my sphere. I'm like, well, what did you do? Well, I, I sent them a text message or an email. But, you know, yes, those are good to kind of, you know, repeat remind things. Remind them, yeah. Remind them, but not if you're truly wanting to get their, you know, engagement and correspondence. Like, if you... You know, if you send somebody an email, you're not going to be like, hi, how are you? They're going to be like, I'm good. Hope you're good too. Thanks. You know, like. You're right. That's it. Right. So that, I think that difference has made, um, as far as for newer agents coming in, as they, they need to know, like to really establish, to get your business right. to where it needs to be, those things need to go back to to doing that. I've got another example. I mean, you mentioned that and it made me think of of the following, which is when someone is setting out to do a class, educational class, um, to buyers, to realtors, any of that, they're relying heavily on just social media and the uh, event bright that you created and this marketing picture to think that people are going to come to your class. When back when I was doing classes pretty heavily, the idea was I would create the social media group, I would create the marketing content, but then I had to go and visit people and talk to them and establish a relationship and then invite them and give them a reason why they should come. And that reason was me. In addition to a couple of days before the actual class, I called them to make sure like, right. hey, are you going to be here? Why? Because I'm about to buy food and I don't want to buy food for people that aren't going to be there. That's the reason why I used. Was it real? Absolutely. But realistically, it was a great way to say, are you going to show up or not? Um, like I'm going to, yeah, like you're putting putting them up. Like if you just don't show up, they're like, oh, he's not even know I wasn't there. Correct. But if you're, if you're doing that, then they're, you're kind of like, oh, I'm expecting you to be here. That's and right. you know, that let and it, down. And that's, I think, more of a society needs to have that mm -hmm. letdown of knowing that they're letting themselves down for one, I mean, yeah. number one, and then other people. Um, but I don't think that, that right now that, that there is enough of that. Right, right. Um, and then, I mean, taking that same example, you've got people that attempt a class and a couple people show up or no one shows up for that matter. So they don't do it anymore. Right. That's it. But I failed. I failed. And my message to those is you only fail when you stop or when you give up. So you may have found one way that did not work. Right. Are you going to keep going or not? And it, I don't know if it's lazy. In the end, is it lazy or is it lack of experience? And then before that, the lack of experience is lack of uh, motivation. And effort. Yeah. And effort to actually try something new and to finish something you started, right. you know? Well, in another example, uh, it, since I started the coffee shop, I've been trying to do different group activities to get people in there. And like aerobics and step class? Yes, yes, that's <laughs> too, right. After you chug an espresso shot. Yes. yes. <laughs> but I was putting out different events and I really wasn't having a lot of people show up for them. I'm thinking, well, this is fun. You know, like we're going to do painting with coffee. We're going to do, you know, different things. And um, I have literally posted to do a women's Bible, Bible study. Like probably this was the fourth time I did it. But this time I did it different. I literally individually message or called right. and invited that those people yeah. to it rather than just putting on a social media thing and inviting them that way where they would, you know, went back. and I had to cancel all the other ones. And I was like, nope, I'm going to make it a point to fill this, this room up because I, but then I had, I personally mm -hmm. contacted them. Yeah. And so that made a huge difference. And we had a full house this morning. So, and, and it, it makes it very, I don't want to say confrontational, but it does make it very uh, direct. It, it makes it as though they are letting you down by not showing up. They are letting you down um, in some way, shape, or form, and people don't like that. I, I don't care who you are. You don't like that feeling. So if you can create opportunities or instances where you're putting them on the spot to um, nut up or shut up at the end of the day, is that what 
this generation needs. And I don't know, I don't want to say generation. I keep saying that. I don't mean to. Is that what this next wave of workers, this next wave of folks in our industry um, need is more uh, face-to-face interaction, more uh, adversity, more yeah, confrontation? It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's society in general. It's not any any particular age. Mm-hmm. It's just, you know, society in general, um, are, it's just it's just different and things have definitely you know changed um but yeah it's not it's not just the the young kids it's you know the you know i mean i see it up to up to you know 50s you know the yeah. ones above 50 are kind of already kind of set in what they're going to do but there's also still the ones out there that are still willing to to learn and to you know want to want to do things better and do it right you know um but yeah just overall society has definitely just been okay with being medio- mediocre. So I'm wondering now um, if the idea behind what we're seeing now is a result of the concept of go to school, get good grades, go to college, get good grades, get out, get a good job, work there, climb the ladder, build your 401k or what have you, and retire uh, when it's time to retire concept that is, I don't know, uh, uh, infusing with today's philosophy, because as we know, most, I can't even say most, I don't don't even know. uh, Maybe I'll look it up, but most of the people that are going to college these days are not getting out and seeing the benefit of it. Right. Yeah. I (laughs) am. I mean, I'm I'm one of those people that I'm all for trades mm-hmm. and pushing trades and trade schools. Um, yeah, I, unless there's something, in my opinion, if you are going to college for something, if you're wanting to be a lawyer, you wanting yeah. to be a doctor, but and just going to go and then like, well, I'm just going to go and then figure it out. I I don't I I'm not a fan. I don't I don't agree with that. Right. I feel like you go with a purpose, purpose and, put, and intention. And, That's right. Yeah, putting you know, especially when you're you know how much it costs these days, you know, it's just, I mean, you're not in a lot of, a lot of times, you know, somebody with experience of, you know, going in and applying for a job is going to get it over somebody with, you know, with a degree, unless it's something that, you know, obviously you can't just become a doctor without going to school and getting a degree, but other jobs, you know, if you're just going to go to be in, in marketing, Mm-hmm. There's not many people out there that I know that you know. Nope, I got turned down the job because I didn't have a you know degree. degree. Mm-hmm. So I I think that 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 point you know yes it, I agree to some aspects of the college thing, but others I feel like trades trades is you know need needs to be pushed more than it is. Well, I'm going to take us a little deeper into this uh, idea of college uh, and parlay it with leadership. Um, what are your thoughts on? The idea that maybe behind the scenes and why we're seeing what we're seeing has a lot to do with the lack of leadership from the top. And you're probably wondering, what do I mean by that? Well, on my social media feed a couple of days ago, all I saw was student loan forgiven. We're going to pass this student loan, forgive the student loans, blah, blah, blah. That being the case, I saw it and went, what the hell? I don't even have a degree. I had student loans because I went to school, but I paid them off with my hard earned money once I realized that this is a joke (laughs) and started to work my tail off. But if you are somebody that is coming up, seeing this going, okay, well, I got out of jail free card. I don't have to pay this stuff off. Maybe I don't have to pay. Maybe that four, five, six years that I went to college would just be washed away. Um, That being the case, it's coming from the top. How do you think that that plays a factor in 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 that? Oh, absolutely, because you know everyone has seen all the forgiveness things, and so they just assume that that's probably going to happen again. So they're not thinking that they're going to either have to pay it back. Well, and also too, you know, um, a lot of them. A lot of kids these days, they're not having to pay for it anyways because it's, you know, mom and dad paying mm. paying for it. And they're not not um investing themselves in right. their education. So it makes a makes a huge difference as far as that goes. Um I mean I've I 
I, I put myself through school. Yes, I did never get my degree, just as you did. And I had student loans and I even had to take out, I had to take out loans in my parents' name, but I paid them back mm -hmm. because what I was, you know, you able didn't have to, credit. Yeah, I didn't have credit. And what I was, what they would give you wasn't enough to, right. to go. So, um, but I, I did that and I, you know, made a point of going to class or I did you know, like if, if I wasn't, if I didn't have that investment myself, mm -hmm. it makes a huge difference as far as what, and I think that's a lot of, you know, what the kids these days is they're not, they're not investing themselves. And so they're like, oh, you know. That's a good point. I mean, it, it that's, in my opinion, could stem from the lack of consequence in what you're doing, the lack of consequence in your actions. So if you go through the motions on this job and you get fired or you end up quitting or whatever the case, and you can find another job or, or mom and dad are there to go, and no big deal, we'll, we'll cover you. You never really had that um, situation or dilemma of, if I don't make money, I'm not going to be able to pay rent. And if I don't pay rent, I don't have a place to live or I don't have uh, gas to put in my car, et cetera, et cetera. That being the case, is that something that, uh, did we do it? And I don't want to say we, because our kids aren't there yet, almost, but is it something that our parents did in giving us a crutch and we're doing to our kids and giving them a crutch? Does that make sense? The lack of consequence in their actions or lack of actions, um, because there's too many choices. There's too, the, we're, you see stuff where um, people are being discriminated over here and this and that. And at the end of the day, in my opinion, they're not. They're not trying hard enough. They're not used to failing. Um, they really haven't had a big failure. <laughs> I mean, I know when I was kicked out and put on my butt and had to pull myself up and go, okay, it's time to become a man. <laughs> it's right. time to take your lumps. Um, I don't know. Are you seeing it? Well, yeah, it's just like you said, I say it all the time, lack, you know, there's no consequences. Why, why would anyone change their behavior if there's, if there's no consequence at all? I mean, that's, they just keep repeating the same thing, you know, over and over again. Yeah. And that's, I, I see that in, you know, all over the place um, and just, just in general in life that just the lack of, you know, and also just, I think a lot of it's too, is just even self-worth of just wanting to like, do it for yourself, you know, of anything, you know, make yourself proud. Right. And so that's, you know, it's just, it is, you know, totally different as far as that goes from what, you know, my, my parents, you know, they, they pushed hard work, you yeah. know, and I, you know, I learned that from them. Um, but do I think I would be much different if I didn't have them as parents? I mean, obviously I can't say one way or the other, mm -hmm. but I feel like I would have, yeah. like I, you know, but it's just because I want, I wanted to, do better. I always, you know, wanted nice things. I yep. wanted to be able to do things. And so like, like you had said too, like most, all of my jobs have been commission based. Mm -hmm. I really, I probably can only name a couple that I had that weren't. Yeah. And because I knew what I put in it, I was going to get out. And if I didn't do it, I knew it was my fault, not anybody else's fault. And, or that, not. and that's because Kendra, you take pride. And I wrote that word down when we first started this conversation and it's the lack of pride. We are toting uh, pride everywhere, but where are the people talking about their own inner pride in the work that they do? Meaning, if somebody tells you to build them a shelf, I don't know, and the shelf can't even hold something up, why would you give it to them? that kind of concept. Don't you take pride in what you're doing? Your name is going on whatever work that you just completed. Does that mean anything to you? I wonder if uh, there is anything, you know, matter of fact, I'm going to check. Let me see. Just, just for giggles. Let's just search and see if there is, um, are there any studies that show a lack of pride in the workplace boom well also i i think about this a lot too is just like if you know if you could write your own obituary you know what you know what would what would you want it to say yeah what do you want to be remembered for absolutely your legacy yeah. i mean do it does anybody even talk about legacies anymore you know no, i mean like it, at the end of the day no one's gonna say oh you know 
I don't want anyone to say, oh yeah, she, you know, did well. I want, you know, like characteristics of the, of me, not right who I am or what I ended up, you know. I want to be like, well, you know, like was Bill Gates, well, he, was Bill Gates, he was the richest guy in the world, whatever. No, that doesn't matter. Like right. who are you as a person, you know, hard worker, what, what it is that you want people to remember you by. Absolutely. And and, I, I like that philosophy. Yeah. So with that philosophy, uh, how, how long are we at right now? Time-wise on, it'll say at the bottom we're at. Okay, perfect. So to kind of start bringing this thing to a conclusion, let's talk briefly about solutions. Why? I'll prompt the question. Is it possible to change lazy behavior? Absolutely. I mean, we know that you have to, if you keep redoing redoing the same thing, you're going to get the same results. You have to make changes. And the changes have to be, you know, a, a purpose. You have to have a purpose to do and want a want. Yeah. You know, it's just like, you know, going on a diet. You're not going to, if you eat good one day, doesn't mean you're going to lose, you know, lose any weight. You know, you have to make it a, a consistent, you know, and take pride in, you yeah. know, and doing it and wanting to see the end result and want to get there. Not just going through the the motions or you know, um, and, you know, quitting early. Yeah, and you you said a couple of words there that are powerful words, and I want to break them down. You mentioned consistency, you mentioned purpose, um, and then the last one was the pride. So, in order to, in my opinion, work for something that you're going to take pride in, you've got to be doing it for a purpose. And those purposes that you can come up with, I don't care if they're materialistic or not, you've got to find your purpose or what your why is. What, what are you, yeah, what, what is the why behind what you're actually doing? Is there a mean, is this a means to an end? Are you just doing this as a realtor, lender, et cetera, just to make enough money to do something? If that's the case, no problem. That's your why. Is it because you want to leave a legacy? Great, even greater why. Is it because you're family and you want to experience things and buy things and um, uh, uh, spread your energy, et cetera, amongst as many as possible? Great, do that. But I think before you jump into a career, you've got to know why you're jumping into that career. And if that is the case, be honest with yourself as far as, Will this why push me forward? Will it take me to the point that um, I take pride in my work? And if it's not, maybe find a different career. Right. Uh, yeah. It's you know definitely you know setting setting goals and obtainable goals. Yeah. And I think a lot of people set unobtainable goals and unrealistic goals that they aren't going to ever. You know. Yes, it's good to yes kind of shoot for the moon. Mm -hmm. You know, and hope you hit the stars, but. And some things you do have to be realistic because once you start that in motion and you see yourself not getting there, that's when people quit. Yeah. So if you're, if you're, you know, I don't know if you've ever read the book, the 12 week, uh, 12 week year. Mm -mm. Um, so basically breaks down your whole year into 12 weeks. You can tell me while I sip on this. Yes. <laughs> so it, you know, so basically you're having multiple years in a, in a year, but you're breaking them down to obtainable. Right. So that way you're not, okay, well, my goal is this year to sell this many houses. Well, now my goal is in, in 12 weeks to do this. Absolutely. And so you can hit that a lot easier because it's it's in reach, not yeah. so far out. And it comes from that uh, concept of how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Exactly. You got to break it up. So when it's time to start game planning and goal setting, um, especially here with the loan officers, we start with the income goal. Mm -hmm. What? How much do you want to make this year? Well, why do we start with that? Well, because that's why you're here. Right. You're not here to make friends. You're not here to, you're here to make money. And that being said, how you make it is up to you. You you can be the best you, or you can just go through the motions. But if you're setting a goal for yourself, it needs to start with something monetary in the workplace, in my right. opinion, on a commission based. So just correction upon a correction. And once you've found that, then you got to back into those numbers. Like, right. Okay. It, takes X amount of production by the end of the year in order to hit that income goal. Now let's break that down to the needle moving activities. How many phone calls or even further back is 
How many applications do you have to take in order to get X amount of loans closed? Okay, well, what does it take to get the applications? Oh, well, that many open houses, that many phone calls, that many of this? Great. Now, how many of those per week does it take to stay on track for yourself? Right. And yeah. when you break yeah, it down MR, like that. Yeah, MRE, um, yes, go ahead. Uh, Millis, uh, millionaire Real Estate book has a calculator for, I mean, it can really can be used for anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, mortgage, uh, real estate. But yeah, you put your... Uh, what you want to obtain at the end of the year, your goal income, and then it backs it down to how many transactions you need to do. And if you're wanting to do, you know, listings versus for buyers and also how many calls you need to make, how many appointments you need to set down to your your weekly, mm -hmm. weekly to daily, right. daily things that you need to do to obtain that. But, could, but yeah, if you just saying, well, you know, it's like a weight loss. If you say, well, I want to lose 35 pounds this year. Okay, well, how many how many pounds a week is yeah. that going to have to be to do that? Because if you're just throwing a number out there, then, you yeah. know, then you're, you know, a lot of times if we do that, we're just going, we're running the last, the last bit of the race. You're right. We're not, you know, you know, if, if we would have just did then the turtle and just kept on yep. steadily going the whole way that you needed to, we would get there. Yes. And we'd probably get there just as fast as the guy that's, you know, running and then burns himself out. And then at the end, he he faints and can't even make it yeah. because he, you know, it's just, that's the thing is a lot of people don't break it down to yeah. where it's a daily thing that has to to do to to get there. Correct. And and it reminds me of uh, Simon Sinek who, who said, start with why. You'd start with the why because there's got to be purpose and tension behind what you're doing. And then you focus on the how because the how in itself is going to kind of lead you to that why or to the end goal based on your why. But it gives you what you need to do. You're the one that tells yourself, this is what I need to do in order to accomplish this. Okay. And if I don't do that, I won't accomplish this. But if my why is strong enough, there's nothing in the world that can stop you from accomplishing this. So you're going to do those tasks and you're going to be the best at what you do because you take pride in what you do. Um, and I think it starts with the mindset. I think the mindset, uh, like I say all the time, you can get motivated, but at the end of the day, discipline is is what's going to take you further and and uh, continue to help you grow and, and um, I don't know, share. Because typically people like yourself and me, we don't take, we don't get to the top by ourselves. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It, it takes a village and and uh, the right people around us at all times and surrounding ourselves with the right people. But we we know that at this point in time. And there's many out there that do not yet. Well, yeah, and people are still scared to ask for that help or ask for, you know, ask for what, you know, they want. And it that's that's the thing, too, is it's a lot of it's scared. People are scared and, and don't want to get out of their comfort zone. And yeah. you have to get out of your comfort zone to do to do anything. Um, you know, I'm like super competitive, like all around, you know, everything. You yeah. know. But I mean, I, I don't want to do something that I'm not going to be good at. So like, you know, sports or whatever it might be, you know, like I'm not going to go enter a, you know, cornhole tournament expecting to just to get out there and play for fun. I'm like, no, I'm I'm coming to win. Correct. And I don't want to, you know, a, a trophy for just participating. I, mm -hmm. That's not who I am. Like, no, I, I want first. That's right. And don't give me that second one because I'm just going to throw <laughs> it away. It. Yeah. yeah. But that's, that's, I think, there's too much participation that just just doing it. So they said, oh, I did it. You yeah. know, like it's no, it has to, you want to be in it to win it. And, Absolutely. you know, and I always say one of my biggest thing is like, stop half-assing everything. That's right. Know? Team whole ass. Yeah. Put your whole ass in it. That's, I mean, that's, I, I, you know, if I can't do something good, I don't, I, I don't want to do it. What's the point? Yeah. yeah. Well, Kendra, this has been a good discussion. Um, I'm almost done with my margarita here, and uh, I think we've gotten a lot of productive uh, uh, conversation and and gems in maybe somebody that's out there um, having a tough time trying to find their why. Maybe they are currently going through the motions but don't want to anymore. Um, and in my opinion, and I believe Kendra agrees, you're not doomed. You're not doomed in regards to it being a genetic curse um, down the line, et cetera, because we all we all come in different shapes and sizes, and many from those shapes and sizes have made it higher than you've ever could imagine um, all way walks of life. Um, so is there anything else that you want to add to this? Anything you want to tell folks out there, get some act right? Um, well, 
uh, welcome to reach out if you'd like to, me to share that um, MRE calculator on kind of where you can do with your goals um, or just, you know, general general questions. Um, be happy to answer any questions that might help get you. There you go. Where can people follow you at? Um, well, my website's KendraRay.com. That's W-R-A-Y. Um, and like my, like I said, I have Morning Buzz Coffee. Um, it's in McQueenie for one of us or that. And that's Morning Buzz McQueenie is our website. Um, but pretty much if you Google my name, you can find me. And you pretty sure. Find a bunch of poker pictures as well. But <laughs> There we go. And that's probably what we're going to need to do after this. Um, guys, I hope you got something out of this. If you did, make sure to like, share, uh, hit the subscribe button. Um, because again, you could have a friend, a buddy that you just don't know how to tell them, quit being lazy, get your shit together. Just hit that share button and forward it along. I'll do it for you. Um, that being the case, we will catch you on the next one. Welcome to Key Factors Podcast, where knowledge meets ambition in the fast paced world of real estate and more. <laughs> I'm your host, Mark Jones, bringing you the latest insight, trends, and expert advice to navigate this dynamic property market. In each episode, we dive deep into the heart of the industry, dissecting market movement, exploring investment strategies, and unlocking the secret to real estate success. Whether you're a seasoned professional, an aspiring investor, or simply looking to stay ahead of the curve, this is the ultimate guide to making informed decisions in the world of property and real estate. So grab a seat and let's uncover the key factors that make all the difference. Welcome to Key Factors Podcast. Let the journey begin.